Hi, this is Mid-Century Postmodern, and I've been asked a few times, why do I need a voltage-controlled amplifier if I've already got an ADSR? So I'm making this video to explain how they relate to each other and uh, give you a little bit more information. I think the best way to think of a VCA is like an audio valve, like a water valve. The water's always there, but until you turn the knob, none of it comes out. And that's the same thing for the VCAs. The audio that you want is always there, just none of it is coming out until you turn the knob. And in this case, the knob is applying control voltage. The higher the voltage, the stronger the signal, and it's the ADSR or envelope generator that generates that voltage. So let's take a look at this uh, on an oscilloscope. There we go. Attack, decay, sustain, release. I think one of the first pieces of confusion people often have with an ADSR is they think the letters all sort of refer to the same thing, and they're a little bit different. Three of them are about time, and one of them is about level. Attack is how long it takes to go from zero voltage to maximum voltage. Decay is how long it takes to go from that maximum voltage to the sustained voltage. Sustain is then the level of voltage. It's not an amount of time. In fact, sustain is usually on for as long as you're holding down the key, whatever key may mean in this sense. But instead, it's what level is it staying at while that key is down. And then release is how long it takes to go from that sustained voltage down to zero. So let's take a look at how we'd hook up an envelope generator and a VCA. A and on this diagram, the green lines re uh, represent audio. The uh, blue line represents uh, control voltage, and the orange line is the gate or trigger. Now, it gets a little confusing because, honestly, they're all kind of the same thing. It's just voltage. But we sort of end up using them in these three different ways. So we start with an oscillator, or really any sound source, and that plugs into a VCA. The VCA is, remember, that audio valve. So on its own, it's not letting any of that audio through until the ADSR, the envelope generator, comes along. You trigger it with a gate or a trigger, and it generates that voltage. You remember the attack, decay, sustain, release voltage that we have. And coming out of the uh, VCA will be the audio that's being fed into it being shaped, the volume of which is being shaped by the uh, shape of the ADSR. So we're going to demonstrate a little bit of that. And uh, here's the, uh, the, the kit that I'm going to be demonstrating it on. We've got the mangrove oscillator. We've got the Three Sisters uh, filter. We've got a, a RYO, a RYO, roll your own three VCA uh, unit. And then I've got a Bifaco ADSR. Now, I'm using the Bifaco ADSR today, and I really like it because it's very full-featured. It has a lot of different inputs and outputs that I can do interesting things with. But they come in with different sorts of functionality. Here's a depth for ADSR. It's pretty basic. It's just got the knobs for AD, S, and R. And then uh, one thing that's nice about it is it has two outputs for, uh, for that output voltage, and it has an inverted output, which you can do interesting things with. Uh, that, that's another video, but it's really pretty interesting. Here's an AI synthesis envelope generator. Uh, it's pretty bare bones, but it has a uh, trigger button, which is nice, so you don't actually have to run voltage into it in order to trigger the envelope. And it also has a looping function, which is pretty cool. And then there's some like this Harvest Man ADSR that also has the VCO built in. So it reduces one more piece that you have to have, plus this one has a bunch of interesting functionality. It's labeled in Russian, which makes it a little bit more difficult to figure out. But it has the normal uh, uh, ADSR output, it has the inverted output, it has some delay functionality, it has attenuators on all the inputs. Uh, a very nice uh, bit of kit here, uh, but I'm going to stick with having the discrete elements today because I think it makes for a better demo. Okay, so let's hook it up. You can see here that I've got the mangrove oscillator being run into the VCA, and I've got the ADSR also being run into the VCA. And uh, uh, along the way, I'm outputting the ADSR to the oscilloscope. So watch the oscilloscope, and as I press the button, you're going to see the envelope firing. So that's a pretty bare bones example, but let's take a look at something a little bit more complex. Uh, we'll add a filter in, and but then let's also add a sequencer. You'll notice from the diagrams that we really had two inputs. Remember, we had the CV input for the pitch, and then we had the gate input uh, to trigger the ADSR. Most sequencers will output both of those things. So let's hook it up. I've got this eight-step sequencer here. I'm going to take the clock out. 
and plug it into the input on the ADSR. So now you can see the envelope starting to fire in time with the sequencer. Now let's hook up the uh, pitch. I'm going to run through a quantizer just to make it a little bit more musical. Come out of the quantizer. That's going to plug into the volt per octave input on the mangrove, and now you can hear it. So like I said, this doesn't have to come from a sequencer. Really just requires some pitch CV and a gate to kick off that envelope. It can come from anywhere, and that's part of the fun of modular synthesizers. Similarly, the ADSR doesn't have to just control the VCA. It can control anything that takes CV input, like a filter. So let's take a look at that. So I updated the diagram. You can see it's the same as we had before. We have the oscillator, the filter, the VCA, and the ADSR. What's different now is that the output from the ADSR is going to go to both the VCA and the filter. And this isn't an uncommon setup in, in uh, fixed architecture synthesizers. You'll sometimes have the, uh, uh, the ADSR that controls the VCA also running to the filter. So I'm just going to unplug the uh, single cable right now. And I'm going to replace it with sort of a splitter that I've got here. This is by Hosa. One part's going to go into the VCA. One's going to go into the filter. just attenuate it down a little bit. Now I'm going to speed it up just a little bit and watch the oscilloscope. You can see that things get closer together and then sometimes it never quite returns to zero. And uh, this is a, a common problem that people have and they don't quite understand what's happening. Remember, the attack and decay and release are all about how long it takes to go from one voltage to another voltage. In this case, we're not leaving enough time. The uh, time between the notes is short enough that the uh, drop off on the release that never gets us back to zero before the attack on the next one happens. And that's where you'll see this sort of behavior where you never quite comes back to zero. The, the, the note never quite finishes. And you might want that, and you might not. If you want that, leave it the way it is. If you don't want that, turn down the attack so it'll attack a little faster. Turn down the release so it releases a little faster. And now you can see we're going back to zero. And there you go, a quick overview of how ADSRs and VCAs work together to generate the sounds that you love. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this quick tutorial, uh, go ahead, hit subscribe, leave me a comment, and uh, the, let me know that you enjoyed it. If you've got suggestions for something that you'd like to see uh, handled in a future episode, uh, leave that comment about that as well. Thanks. <laughs>